What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, everybody. My name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today, we will be looking at the 1972 Ford Sports Custom, because this is one that I have on loan from my good friend James. You can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1972 as we check out our Ford Sport Custom pickup truck by Mobius Models. This model kit came out in 2016 by Mobius Models. It features soft PVC tires, detailed 302 cubic inch V8 engine, chrome details, and a detailed chassis. Part of the fifth generation of the Ford F-Series, the Sport Custom represented the top of the line in consumer styling and performance in a pickup truck. Mobius Models Precision Tooled Styrene Model Kit of the 1972 Sport Custom features extraordinary detail and accuracy. The kit is highlighted by a fully detailed interior, accurate 302 cubic inch V8 engine, and detailed chassis. Completed kit measures over 8 inches long and includes clear and chrome plated parts, soft PVC tires, detailed instructions, and decal sheet. Paint and cement are required for assembly, sold separately. Here's our accurate body styling, chrome details, and a detailed interior. Now let's take the lid off our 1972 Ford Sport Custom by Mobius Models and see what's under the lid. What's nice about this kit is that all the chrome parts are in plastic bags so that they will not scratch one another. Our cab is also in a plastic bag, which again is quite nice, and our glass as well. Then we have the parts for our truck bed in this bag. Tires are also in a nice bag here. Then we have our frame and components in this bag. Our engine parts in here. Then we have our nice full color instruction sheet, followed by our decal sheet. And I won't turn this over till the end so that it's a big surprise. One thing I really enjoy with these Mobius model kits is of course the full color instruction sheets because they also give full color paint instructions as we will see. Here we have the beautiful chassis, the frame here which reminds me of the same building style as the AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck which we'll see the link flash across right here. As you can see there are a lot of parts that go together. We've got our right twin I-beam axles our front steering cross member, steering box, and motor mounts. Our second panel here shows our right radius arm gluing up onto the frame, and our third panel here shows the tie rod and left radius arm gluing up into the frame, and it says, note how the tie rod feeds through holes in radius arms. Panel 1D shows our sway bar and our links gluing up underneath onto our frame while panel 1E shows our three-piece differential all gluing together. In panel 1F, we start to glue the rear springs onto our frame. Panel 1G shows our exhaust pipes going up into the frame. Note that exhaust pipes weave through length of frame. Rear of exhaust pipes fit beneath rear crossbar and front section fits over middle support bar. Panel 1H shows our rear axle assembly gluing up onto our springs, followed by the rear shock absorbers. And panel 1i is really reminiscent of the 53 Ford pickup truck from AMT, because you have the tire, the spare wheel, and the spare wheel carrier gluing up underneath on our frame. In this model kit, the builder has a choice between using the stock factory wheels or these five-spoke Krager wheels, all of which pop onto these very nice tires. Our wheels and tires glue on via these brake backing plates which pop onto our axles. After we get our stock wheels on, we have the choice of using these great 1970s style Ford hubcaps which simulate the Krager 5-spoke wheels. 
Are you ready to build this really cool 302 Ford V8 engine? Well, if so, you got a real nice treat going on here. We have our right and left hand side engine block with our oil pan. Next up in our engine assembly, we get to glue the fan to the fan belt with the alternator, the water pump and timing cover, our engine front plate, fuel pump and starter motor all to the engine block assembly. We continue our engine assembly with our intake manifold, cylinder heads, and exhaust manifolds all gluing onto our assembled engine. Followed by our valve covers, air cleaner, carburetor distributor, coil, and heat riser pipe. What engine wouldn't be complete without the upper radiator hose and lower radiator hose? And down here we get to glue our horns onto our radiator. The radiator, the completed engine, and the drive shaft all hook up along the frame into the rear differential to complete the unit. Now you're going to have to paint your cab first, which we can see in our painting instructions toward the back, but once that is done, you can add in all your mirrors and windows and the sun visors. Note that the clear windows should be inserted through the inside of the cab. And we can complete our cab by taking our master cylinder right and left hand side, gluing them together and gluing them to the firewall, which then glues into the cab. Following that, we can glue in our radiator support, our battery, and our windshield washer bottle, and our jack. For our hood, we have right and left hand side hood badges, as well as a chrome trim bar. Then we finalize the cab by gluing on our door handles right and left, our gas cap, our right and left rear view mirrors, windshield wipers, and grill with the two headlight lenses. The interior is a nice multi-piece affair with a bench seat, two side panels, a nice floor, the rear wall, and a cross member. Finishing off our interior assembly is the dashboard, the pedal cluster, which includes the accelerator, the brake, the clutch, and the emergency brake pedal, all gluing up onto this pedal locator, all gluing up under the dash. We also have our steering column and our steering wheel. The cab then drops onto the interior assembly. And now we get into the components that make up our truck bed with our right outer bed walls and the inner bed wall. The bed walls have to go somewhere so we can glue them to the floor, the front wall, and we've got a two-piece tailgate here which also glues on in to make one big unit. Then we complete our bed assembly by attaching the taillight housing and the taillight lenses and our rear bumper. Finally, all our completed components attach to the chassis. So here we have a choice of a rear chrome bumper or a rear step bumper. Our bed drops on, our cab drops in place, our hood goes onto the top of our cab, and then we get our front bumper. The Ford F100 was available in a variety of color schemes, including a number of two-tone combinations. A general list of the factory colors appears on the back page. The builder may wish to do research online or refer to vintage Ford automotive brochures for more detailed references and inspiration. Place the decals as indicated. And here Mobius has given us some paint suggestions. And as you can see, we've got a black along the bottom and a light silver gray up top, as well as a black roof. And here's all our decal placements on the dashboard and the body, license plates, and everything else. And here we have a nice photograph of our decal for our auto light label, which goes in on our air cleaner. You can also see the nice interior paint scheme that they've given this model. Finally, Mobius has given us a paint color chart in actual color so that we can see all the options that came in the 1972 Ford Sport Custom Pickup Truck. There are a lot of parts trees in this model kit, which we will take a look at very briefly before I bring them up into the camera lens to show more detail. Here's the cab to start us off on our look at the plastic components. And as you can see, there are some nice grills in here with the little holes for our windshield wipers to fit in. Nice molding up along the side of this cab. Very well done by Mobius. Again, the panel in the back has the proper ridges in place. And this side looks really good as well. There's our front of the cab. 
looking very nice. Underneath there are some mold marks, quite a few, so you'll need to clean those up with a number 16 hobby blade. But overall this cab is really, really nice. Our next part sprue includes the hood, the floor panel, and our back panel of our cab. And you can see the nice detail in that floor pressing. Ford letters across the hood. If you turn it over, you've got all our hood braces underneath, as well as the interior floor with the carpet molded in, and a whole bunch of mold marks, which of course you're going to have to clean up with your number 16 hobby blade. But overall, this is very nice detail and great work. Next, we have our truck bed outers, and you can see the nice trim that carries along on the side of our truck beds. However, turning it over reveals again mold marks going in here, but I do believe these are covered by the inner wheel aprons, so it may not be too much of a problem. There is our nicely molded bed flooring with our inner wheel aprons as well. And turning them over, you can see again ribs underneath for strength and support, and a bunch of mold marks again that need to be taken care of. Next we have our interior door panels with beautifully molded armrest and door hinges. Next we have our beautifully detailed interior panels with our seat here and our nicely detailed door panels. As you can see, they have beautiful armrests, detail here, and window cranks that actually look like the real window cranks of the truck. Our next sprue includes our frame rails, our front support, our drive shaft, and the pedal mount locators. Our next parts tree here contains our front wheels with the wheel hubs and the rear wheels without any hubs, which is accurate to the real truck. We have our factory radiator here, as well as our rear bumper. We also have the front suspension and this nice tailgate with Ford stamped in it, as well as the factory steering wheel and our tie rods right here, and our front engine support. Here's what our parts look like close up, and you can see some really nice detail on those lugs. And there is our Ford stamped into the back tailgate. Our firewall, rear tailgate, fender brace support, dashboard, inner truck bed, anti-sway bar, and steering column, and front axle support here are all part of this parts tree. And look at that wonderful detail on our dashboard and all these nice components. This parts tree includes all the pieces for our engine block assembly for the Ford 302, including our engine block and transmission halves, cylinder heads, carburetor, intake manifold, oil pan, alternator, distributor, air cleaner, and engine bits, as well as our exhaust manifolds, all the hoses, our pulleys, our fan, front engine covers, and our exhaust pipes with mufflers. And again, some really nice detail onto all these different components. The final parts tree shows the remainder of our suspension components, as well as other details, such as the rear differential and the front cover. Our spare tire with a hole through the center, which is accurate. Front suspension components, our pedals, and our brake master cylinder. Followed by the rear springs, the sun visor, the battery, the wheel backs. Our shock absorbers, and the jack and windshield washer bottle. And our horns. Again, the detail on these parts is quite crisp and accurate. Our chrome pieces include this really wonderful tailgate insert with the big Ford letters stamped into it. We have a grill which you can see right through the grill bars, so remember to paint your radiator wall gloss black so that it looks good through the grills. Here we have our Krager mag wheels as well as the four to five spokes hubcaps. There's our chrome bar for the bottom of our hood windshield wiper blades, and rear view mirrors, the side hood details and emblems, 
chrome valve covers, door handles, gas cap, and rear view mirror, and our factory chrome bumpers. Here's our see-through grill, and you can tell this is going to make for a really nice kit. Here's our glass components, and as you can see, they have these sunken in ridges around them so that they will fit nice and tight inside that cab. We also have our headlight lenses, and I'm going to leave the rear red taillight lenses in the bag just so that I don't end up losing them on James. Our tires are very nice, but they are very generic. There is no lettering on either side of these as to what they are. However, the tread pattern is very nice and will look great on your finished model truck. Finally, the moment you've been waiting for, the big reveal of our decal sheet. And here it is, and as you can see, there are a lot of cool things on here. Inserts for our tailgate panel, Ford blue ovals, white wall tire decals, dashboard, and of course our nomenclature across the front. Then we have all these California license plates, Holland, Ford F100, Ford, Pickup, and Ohio plates, as well as generic showroom 1972 license plates. You even get an Autolite sticker right down here. And that completes our look at our 1972 Ford Sport Custom Pickup Truck by Mobius Models. And if you've built this model kit, please share your pictures with us on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where we got to see the Mobius Models 1972 Ford Sports Custom Pickup Truck. Thanks again to our good friend James. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building! Now let's open the lid on our 1972 Sport Custom. Which is... Oh man. Yeah, right.